Uh, let's start by introducing yourselves. I am Carrie McNulty. And I'm Tony Humrickhauser. I'm the director and, of Gypsy. Yes. And also one of my best friends for many years. <laughs> and I am playing Rose. Okay. Well, you both have been gone for a while. Uh, Carrie, I know you've been gone since 2008. And That's Tony, it. your last show was... I directed The Nerd last year. Okay, yes. so... I've okay, never, it's been too long. I've been here for... 22 seasons now. This is my 22nd season. 22nd season. And, and Carrie, how many seasons you were here before your long break? So I began here in 1996. I was here a full season, 96, 97, 98, going into 99. And starting right around 2000, I would come down for one particular show. So 2000, 2001, two off, I think, 2004. And then I came back in 2008. And now I've been gone for six years. Six and I'm years. Back then. Right. Right. So that's, I don't know, I, I put it close to, I remember when we did Hello Dolly together, that was, what did we decide, 2002, Two. um, I had, I had counted how many shows I had done here, and around then I think I got to a little over 30. Right. So, we definitely have a rich history yeah. here, <laughs> both together and separate, but Tone has directed, you've acted I, in more shows than you've directed, Yeah, but. I started acting here in 93 with right. Bye Bye Birdie. Stay tuned. And uh, then I, in 96, I directed Camelot. So that was my first show that I directed. So I, I've teetered and tottered between directing and performing. Uh, but I've consistently directed for the past seven years, eight years. Uh, usually one a season. They usually ask me to do the shows. The, the classics is usually what they want me to do. So, uh, And I enjoy doing them. And he's amazing. <laughs> beyond and I, I mean and I, it might seem like I'm biased because like I said he's one of my dearest friends for a hundred years but even just watching Tone speak to the company who was the age that I was when I started here watching even though we're all weary and worn out last night and him giving notes and tweaks he misses nothing he is invested in everything and he is so incredibly sorry Tone I have to do it He's so incredibly inspiring. And not only are these, us as a company, getting this wonderful direction and piecing together our unique production of Gypsy, but there, I believe, I as well, am learning so much on stage as well as off from him. Wow! Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I love it. No, I think that's very. It's very kind. It's inspirational. And on the flip side, it's not one. It's not rocking and stroking either. But, right. but when Scott said, "I want you to direct Gypsy next year," and I said, "Well, you don't do Gypsy without knowing who is going to play your Mama Rose," and immediately I said, "I want Carrie to play Mama Rose," and so that's when it went into motion, and uh, we were able to negotiate with equity and carry, and then it worked out. So I'm really, really lucky. Because 60% of the show is is her, and Herbie and Louise, right? And without, but she's the engine. Without her, the show doesn't happen. Um, and so I'm really, really no lucky. <laughs> and we have a weird kind of, like, we're such old friends that we communicate in like that scary twin language. Right. I'll just say a word and then she goes, oh right. Like we kind of talk to each other in sound bites, which is kind of nice yeah. in the rehearsal hall because there's so much to do right. that I can just look at her and say, she goes, I got it. And then we don't even need to speak about it again. So, and it usually is yeah. eerily accurate. Right. Like finish each other's sentences or he'll have a look and go, why don't you do that one? Th oh, oh yeah. Let me try option A, B, or C and let's see what what fits for both of us. And there's such a mutual understanding and respect that with what could be an incredibly pressurized situation, putting this project up, it's such a celebrated show. It's such an iconic role. It, it can feel overwhelming, it can. But being in his hands and, and trusting him the way I trust him, there's um, such a joy that replaces that feeling of nerves and overwhelming and feeling a little like spastic about it he knows exactly what to say exactly how to say it and we're right back on track so I feel like this is an incredible gift that we'll never forget yeah for sure 
So was it working with him that brought you back, or was it the role that brought you back, or a combination of it? But I mean, absolutely a combination. I mean, it's it's an interesting question that has been asked multiple times of me regarding this show, it being such an iconic role played by so many amazing, celebrated divas of the musical theater world. Um, it's it's an actress's dream to aspire to play. So clearly, the opportunity to do that. Is a, is a huge draw. I would not be here doing this show if it wasn't for the history that I have here. Tony wanting to do it with me, Bruce, Scott, Tom, Jen. These are people we have such a rich history with. So it's uh, there's a family feel. There's a trust, you know. So definitely a combination of both, you know. But without Tony, I, I wouldn't be here doing it, you know. <laughs> right. Well, since you mentioned family, this show is sort of about family, but kind of a dysfunctional family, would you say? Or is it just a driven family? Or? Go ahead. I, I, think it's a, I think every family has dysfunction, right? I don't think there's one family without it. But the interesting thing about this, it's, it's a, a quest for her, a, a, a parent to want for their child that which they have not been able to get themselves, which I think is very universal. Uh, unfortunately, or what happens is she gets blinded by fame. I think fame becomes very important, and it's really relevant with what's happening today. We're talking about all yeah. these reality shows that are on TV. Dance moms. Dan uh, these parents that really were unable to achieve a goal when they were a child, and then they push their children into something that they, they, they retrofit their child into their dream. And, but then there are, there's throwback for it. Uh, and uh, cir in circumstances in this show, the throwback's quite great. Um, but it is about the deterioration of the family, the deterioration of vaudeville, um, and uh, and what happens and how it plays out. It's it's it is constructed so beautifully, uh, but ultimately it's about families and the, the 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 need to be recognized and loved. Really, is what the show's about. And I really found inspiring as well. I keep coming back to that word. Um, if you would talk about looking up the you, there's there's a lot of. Uh, specific themes that keep coming back and coming back and obviously many songs that people will recognize whether they go to the theater or not everything's coming up roses all i need is the girl um roses turn together wherever we go let me entertain you pardon me let me entertain, let me entertain you. you hello yes. that's yes. that that is without doubt yes. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but the interesting thing is dreams that's right what I want. Yeah. so you look into the you the even if you look up the the definition of the word dream, there are three basic definitions. The first is the thing that we do when we go to sleep. We let our, our minds go. Uh, the second is something that we aspire to, so a dream, be, that, that's be honest. And then there's the third, which is the, the thing that borders on delusion, right? Mm -hmm. Something that is, that is an altered state, a dreamlike state. And so There's a lot of that. There's a lot of that in this show. So just on that one word, and it's been great talking to the kids, uh, the kids, I they're know. kids now, you know, it's weird, <laughs> we were once kids, but right, now we're right. not kids, we're, now we're grown, we're them. Now you're That's playing right. the parents. We're the parents, yeah. exactly, That's exactly, right. but it's, but it's That's nice right. to come back and mentor and, and talk about things like the importance of the written word and honoring the written word, word and and, you know, we all travel through life with our own individual lexicons, right, what we understand a word to be. And then there is the meaning, the actual, the literal definition. And then there is the, the, the interpretation of the author, what the author wants you to do. So it's, 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 it's multifaceted. And uh, so it's been really exciting to work on this show that people think that they know. But then you start working on it. And you're like, ooh, I, have, I really didn't think about that before I started working on it. That's right. So you re we're rediscovering it. Absolutely. Right? Back to that 1959 cast album that everybody looked at was, it was a white album. Ethel Merman, Jack Klugman, 
um, and dr- directed by Joe Morrow Robbins, and Stephen Sondheim is the lyricist, Julie Stein. Julie Stein composing, and we all grew up with that iconic album that we listened to and wore out, or bought. I, I got mine from the library, the public library, <laughs> I checked it out. The library is a lot of And yeah. it was a record yeah. player you put it on, it was like a big CD. But, but, it's like, <laughs> but, it's, but of all the, I mean, everybody in, in 1959, this was a hot commodity, what? and it was really cutting edge for the time. Some of the language, even today, for is sure. so like, you could think it was written yesterday. It was really, it's, it's pretty, or today, I should say. That's right, yeah. Well, and it even goes back to what you were saying. Like, how, how do you take... I mean, clearly this show has been done multiple times. It has been the most revived show. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. The most revived show on Broadway. So you got the 59 Ethel Merman. And then it doesn't come back till 73 with Angela Lansbury. Right. And then you have Tyne Daly in 89. 89. And then you have Bernadette Peters in... 2003? 2003. And then you have Patti Lepone in 2008. That's right. And then the film versions that we were talking about. Right. Uh, when did the Rosalind Russell... That's 61. Okay, so that was just that, a, that was pretty Very fast. quick, yeah. And that was the first... That Ethel was my Merman, first exposure and to Ethel that. Merman was irate, fun fact. Ethel yes. Merman, when she passed, they went to the back of her closet and they found bootlegs of Rosalind Russell singing all the songs for real for Gypsy terribly because she was dubbed in the movie she sang half the songs and the other half were dubbed yeah. Yeah. but she had all of the recordings of her actually singing the songs so it must have been this twisted like i knew what, what she, she like, i knew what she really sounded like, like. playing them at dinner <laughs> parties and it wasn't or something. me yeah 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 i think well and that's yeah. something that we discovered as well i mean this is a really you know clearly she sings yeah. rose sings throughout the show but it really is an actor's role Oh, completely. And right. it's it's interesting as we were playing with music, talking to Tom, Tone and I obviously talking back and forth, and now in 2014 we can hear every version just about that's ever come out, from right. the, your regional theater to your community theater to a high school production, hilarious. To the Broadway some, replacements, to the, right. Yes, to right. people that are recording it when they go to see right. it, and to hear how the Merm, the Merm, sang it in 59, then to listen to, oh, they altered that a half step. They altered that a full step. Oh, this was completely reorchestrated for this. And the person I saw do it on Broadway was Tyne Daly. Right. And who did you, who did you have you seen that on Broadway? Uh, you... I've never seen it on Broadway. Okay. Which I'm kind of glad I haven't seen it mm-hmm. on Broadway. I'm glad I, I was super young. Yeah. Yeah. But, and Linda Lavin replaced her. That's right. Yes. Right. Linda Lavin. Uh, Alice. Alice. Thank you. That's what yes. it, that is. Yeah. Old musical theater. <laughs> She had just won the Tony for Broadway Bound, and then she replaced her in Gypsy. Right. So it's really, oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot that she, was she was a hot commodity during that time. Yeah. And still is, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, Tyne Daly, she's, she's right now, she's in, she was nominated this year for Tony. Yes. I can't think of the name of the show, but she was there. Yes, she, she looked was. good. I, I live in New York, and I couldn't tell you the title. <laughs> I can't think of it either. Um, but but <laughs> yeah. uh, another thing, Dave, that we found interesting was, going back to that script, is... Uh, when Arthur Lawrence wrote the story, Ethel Merman was not an actress. She was just a, the grand dame of Broadway. So she was a singer. So his way of making her act or helping her to act was he wrote things with musical notation. So uh, so over a line that will say slowly, yeah. uh, quicker, she speeds up here. So Ethel Merman could understand... It in musical terms. So that's how he got her through the role. role. Um, he wasn't directing the show, but it was his subtext. It was his sub. Uh, it was yeah, his yeah. way of getting information to her that she was not necessarily given by Jerome Robbins. You know, because they were all feuding during this time, right? Yeah. There was a big. There's if you can read. There's some great books. Arthur Lawrence wrote a book called uh, "Mainly on Directing." His autobiography. His first autobiography. Um, it's fascinating just to even to look at the history of the show. And uh, it is one of the top three longest book musicals, which yeah. we've done, I think we've done pretty darn well. Yeah. First yeah. act is running an hour seven, which generally... Probably we can maybe, even, who knows. Yeah, we've got some time, but yeah. generally it's an hour 30, so we're doing pretty well. Oh, I didn't know it was that. Yeah, it's a yeah. big difference. 
Another weird fun fact that I just think is hilarious that Tone and I talked about. Let me pause this.